Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today, Building Your Hair Care, Personal Care Business. And uh, we're just going to give you all of a few minutes just to uh, come on into the uh, webinar. Thank you for your patience for us. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we are here. I am Sharon Francis, and I'm the business advisor for the Minority Business Assistance Center. Um, we are hosted by the Columbus Urban League, uh, yet we are a state-funded agency, uh, and our mission is to provide uh, technical assistance for um, small and disadvantaged businesses, minority businesses in particular, uh, to assist you with growing and developing your business, um, as well as obtaining um, certifications if you desire with the state of Ohio um, for doing business with the state. Um, we are a full service agency to cost the Columbus Urban League. And so for those who are our clients, you do get access to all of those services that are available if you need them. So um, we're excited about the opportunity of serving. That's what we're about. Uh, the Urban League has been um, around, actually, uh, their National Urban League uh, for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. So been doing a good work. And definitely because of COVID, um, a lot of opportunities have, have come through to um, the minority community through the Columbus Urban League. So we're part, we are proud to be a part you know, of that, uh, that legacy. So um, as I said, we have with us today two distinguished entrepreneurs. Um, we have Daisha Tate of Regal Beauty. Um, and I'm, yes, of Regal Beauty. And also Crystal Allen, who is the owner of Full Circle Hair Restoration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, many of us know her through her shop. Circle of Styles, but she has expanded her um, her services, and so you're going to hear more about that from her even as we go forward today. So we're just really glad to have them with us, and um, so I am going to uh, open up today. Um, Daisha, if you wouldn't mind just telling me, uh, telling us about how you started your business. So yes, yeah, so my name is Daisha Tate. I am co-owner of Regal Beauty Hair and Beauty Supply. Um, we opened our business um, February 4th of 2019. Um, it was me and my sister. Um, we are co-owners together. And so we decided at that time, I guess you can say it was around 2018, um, it was a lot of discrimination going on with, you know, Black women in um, Asian beauty supply stores. And we just came together and we're talking and we were like, listen, we want to start a business. We both were very passionate about hair. Um, you know, I did hair growing up from the time I was 15 throughout mm -hmm. high school. You know, I braided everybody's hair. And um, me and my sister have always been passionate about natural hair specifically. And we were like, you know, what, we, what can we do to not only bring something to our community, but also provide a service that's not necessarily offered to our people um, by our people. And so we were like, okay, let's go ahead and do a beauty supply. Um, and the whole focus of that was just to have an environment that was kind of like a boutique feel um, that would make our customers feel comfortable where they didn't feel as though they were being watched over, um, harassed while they were shopping, where they can get education, um, where discrimination wasn't um, a factor. And when I say discrimination, I'm not just talking about, you know, the owners toward the customers, but sometimes naturals get discriminated against, you know, whether they wear their natural hair, whether they wear weave, um, braids, you know, sometimes we kind of discriminate against each other because of our own choices. And so our whole, um, you know, purpose was to be a place that provided well-rounded products, quality products, um, specifically black owned, as mm -hmm. well as hair um, and other um, beauty supplies that our people love. Mm -hmm. And so... 
that's how we started. And that that's where we are. I mean, it's changed a little bit over time, of course, because you have to adjust, but um, it's still our core of but, who like of who we are. Great, great, great. So how have you um well listen before I, I'm I want to continue this line of discussion with you and then we're going to turn to Crystal because I want to hear her story as well. I'm sure as as the rest of our participants. Um how did you um how did you deal with COVID and all of the you know um guidelines and did, did it hurt your business? How did that affect you? Deisha. You're asking me? Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so COVID definitely um, affected our business. Um, we started as a brick and mortar. Um, we were located at 973 East Main Street in the heart of Old Town East. Um, mm -hmm. Our business was probably open for about a year and some change when um, COVID hit. Um, at that time, we were starting to get more traction because, you know, being a new business, marketing is everything you're trying to get people aware of your brand get your name out there get as many people in the door as possible and so we were starting to pick up and see more people coming into the store um as soon as COVID hit um our sales went down to zero wow for 30 days we had no sales um and so in our mind we were like what are we going to do <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what are we going to do and so from there um we already had an online presence and so we began to really work on our online website making sure our products were up to date everything was on there and then we began to offer curbside pickup great that increased our sales um people took advantage of that um but it still wasn't enough to really mm -hmm. sustain ourselves as a brick and mortar. And so um, at that point, we had to make the hard decision to close our doors um, and transition to being strictly online. Okay. Um, our landlord was understanding. He allowed us to get out of our lease, which was awesome. Yes. Um, and, you know, um, from there, it was kind of like, I mean, although it was a bad situation, we grew up, we grew fast mm -hmm. from there. Okay. Um, okay. That was a really good decision for us, um, especially with, you know, during the height of COVID um, and also with, you know, Black Lives Matter and all of this police brutality that was going on. People wanted to support Black owned businesses even more. And so mm -hmm. that also helped to propel our business during that time. Um, but just having that online presence already really helped us convert and pivot um, and keep our business going and, and basically not um, giving up at that point. So good for you. Congratulations on that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that there are others that are in the room that can talk about the impact of um, COVID. Um, we're going to turn to Crystal. Crystal, can you tell us about how you started your business and um, then even how you're speaking to how you have had to pivot um, okay. or to deal with, with uh, COVID? All righty. Well, I'm Crystal Allen and I'm the owner of Circle of Styles, also a Full Circle Hair Restoration Center. And so I've been in the industry for will be 20, 32 years, I'm sorry, in wow. July. And so um, as far as transitioning over to a hair restoration center, 2016, I've always focused on, you know, healthy hair. And so um, I was even noticing with that, that I still had a lot of questions. I had clients that were, you know, starting to have, you know, scalp issues or uh, hair loss. And I wasn't really understanding what was going on. And so um, I took my first uh, trichology course in 2006. And so from there to about 2012, um, I was doing a little bit with it, but not a lot just because I had let fear set in. It's like, okay, how can I transition, try to mm -hmm. start a, you know, a new 
you know, segment within cosmetology, but something different. And so, you know, I didn't really do much with it for six years. And then in 2012, um, it was still pressing on me because I was still, you know, noticing different things with my clients and I wanted to get some answers. So that's when I decided to go to trichology school. And so I completed that in uh, 2013. And so from 2013 to the present, I've just been uh, transitioning over to be a hair restoration clinic. And so, um, you know, it's pretty much, you know, just like starting completely over again mm. um, in, you know, the industry or whatever. So uh, trying to do it, you know, really heavy. We started in about 2018, 2019, Mm-hmm. really starting to, you know, do some marketing and things like that to, you know, let the community know that we were here um, and that we were offering, you know, different services that could help along with, you know, your stylist. If you've gone to a dermatologist that we could all work together to make sure that we're getting the best results for the for the client. And so that's how I pretty much got started. I, you know, went to school, got my certification and I've just been taking you know, a lot of trainings since then. And so um, I had started reaching out, trying to get my foundation together as far as, you know, my bookkeeper, because I'm separate from the actual salon. So, you know, I started, you know, getting my foundation. So my bookkeeper, my um, chief financial officer, some business coaches and things like that, you know, to really help me get a good foundation. And so from there, uh, once COVID hit, I was in a um, a decent place, you know, to still be able to sustain um, right. with their help, you know, financially. And so, you know, we were still able to, you know, pay our staff and, you know, and things like that. And that was just from having that good foundation with them. So we were able to, you know, make sure that we had everything set up properly as far as, you know, the bank accounts and things like that. So, you know, we were able to take advantage of some of the um, grants and loans that the SBA and different organizations were offering because we did have, you know, our foundation in order. So that helped. And so, from, you know, COVID, we were closed for 12 weeks. Um, And so, you know, we just constantly, my administrator, um, we stayed in touch with our clients, you know, sending emails, sending cards, um, calling them, you know, hey, do y'all need products? What's going on? So, you know, we were shipping products to our clients. Uh, We were still doing, we started doing, and I'm not technology (laughs) (laughs) at all, but I had to start learning. So we started doing, you know, Zoom consultations. Um, Yep. And then, you know, sending, you know, shipping products and things like that to still be able to have some income, you know, coming in, even though we weren't able to uh, work. But my administrator at the time, she was awesome. So, you know, I work a lot with people that wear um, different forms of cranial prosthetics. And so those are hair systems and we use different attachments. So she was able to get us a um, a window of three days where we were allowed to come in to service those clients so we could make sure that they weren't having any um, concerns with their scalp or anything from having those systems on. So she had to work hard, but she was able to, you know, get that for us. (laughs) And so we were able to service them, but we just had to really, you know, get an online presence, even though we have a website and things like that. And we have been doing a little uh, marketing on Instagram and Facebook, things like that. But, you know, we had to go back, you know, old school and just start calling people, checking in because, you know, not everybody reads emails, even though we were sending them out. Um, But we started, you know, just calling just to make sure that our clients you know, that they were okay. And like I said, we were shipping products and doing things like that or meeting, you know, clients at the shop so they could pick them up, things like that. So, and so since then, it's really helped us to get more of a uh, a presence doing the Zoom consultations and things like that with, with clients. 
good for you. You know, you, you've hit on so many different points. Um, and I do just want to kind of bring this out um, that definitely for a business in order to be able to um, survive, um, because you never know when a situation is going to come that is going to upset, you know, the apple cart. Uh, right. Being able to pivot to, you know, something else, um, you know, if you're not able to do direct services as far as you know, providing hair care, um, you know, being able to offer those products, um, going, to, having that online presence, the Zoom consultations, that's, that's huge right there, you know, and keeping in contact with your clients, because uh, I don't care, you know, what type of business that you're running. Uh, but those who you serve are your best source of recurring revenue. Right. Right. And so you want to foster those relationships and, um, you know, keep in, you know, in touch with people. Um, and, you know, that's how you build that loyalty. Mm -hmm. And I know in the hair business, loyalty is everything. You right. know, when you, typically somebody finds a good, you know, uh, hairstylist or, you know, uh, um, uh, even doing business at certain stores, people will go back to the same right. place for those products, you know? Um, so uh, absolutely, I, I, I'm encouraged to hear that you have done that. And also building a good foundation for your business. Um, I counsel a lot of um, folks that are in the, the hair and beauty business. Uh, and typically once they get their license, you know, I'm ready to, to go ahead and start my business or, you know, they're working from home or, you know, they're, they're trying to get into a shop or whatever, but they have not done the necessarily um, back end work to make sure that um, they're keeping track of their finances. When you're looking for um, grants or you're looking for if you have to get a loan, even if you're trying to get certified, you know, uh, with the state, which has opportunities that you can also take advantage of. The first thing they're asking is, okay, let me see your financials. Um, and often I'm talking to people, I say, well, you know, how much did you make last year? Well, I don't know. Do you know what you're making on a regular basis? Do you know if your business is breaking even? Uh, um, do you have a separate business account? Often people are operating out of their personal and trying to extract that information. Did you file your taxes for the last year? Those are the things that they're going to ask for um, to prove that you are a credible business so that you can qualify for the grants. Or if a lender is looking at you, they want to be able to see that even if you're suffering a hit now, they've seen that in the past that you have been able right. to show that right. you were being able to be profitable, at least to break even, or that you can afford to carry debt. You know, because they just want to know that you're going to be able to make that payment. Right. <laughs> so um, so no matter where you are in your business, um, it's important. Uh, and the, the Urban League, the, the Minority Business Assistance Center, we are here um, to help you um, make sure that your business is properly structured. Um, help you to get that if you need a business plan. Um, if you need uh, financial projections or if you need uh, referrals for accountants or even legal assistance, that's what we are here to do. Um, um, I see we've got um, several folks that have uh, checked into our webinar today. Um, Teresa Stewart, um, glad that you were able to join us. I see Denise Mixon, Donna Jones, Michelle Gladney, hey. <laughs> Uh, again, we just want to welcome you all to our seminar today. And if you have any questions for our panelists, feel free to put them in the chat and I will read them to them so that they can respond. Okay. Um, how the, and again, I, I was asking everyone, if you would, to just um, put your information in the chat box so we know who's here, you know, what your business is. Um, and even if you want to put your website or your contact information um, for networking, um, because that's a, a huge part of business. You know, we all don't operate in our own independent silos. Right. You know, there is, you know, we're here to help one another. You know, um, there's enough folks that need services that we don't have to bite and devour each other. Right, exactly. <laughs> help each other to grow. Okay, so tell me, um, you know, we talked about, um, of course, the challenge of COVID. 
but are there any other challenges that you're facing? I know that um, many businesses are having difficulty getting employees. And I know that in the hair and beauty business, typically most folks start off as solo operators. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know, can you still be a solo operator today and be successful? Um, if you could speak to that, then we'll kind of talk about the employee um, challenges, perhaps. Uh, I'll start with that one. Uh, you can be solo and be, you know, successful, but you will be extremely tired. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, your priorities, you know, can get a little, you know, mixed up because you're having to devote so much time to working, you know, yes. in the business to where you don't really get to work on the business. Right. And so, you know, you can do it, but it's, it's very hard. And so um, in order to grow and elevate, to go to higher levels, you definitely need, you know, staff. And so, you know, that's something that I've been trying to, you know, work on because I've been, you know, so low for, shoot, what 28 29 years and so now that i'm trying to you know elevate and you know go to higher heights it's like okay i can't do this by myself right. um you know so the challenge with that is you know people don't want to work <laughs> there's mm. so many you know people that you talk to and they you know may come in for you know interview or whatever and you know, it's hard to find in someone with the same work ethics that you have that's passionate about, you know, what you do, because whoever we bring in has to have the same, you know, passion with about the clients and their needs, especially with working with people with hair loss is very sensitive. And right. so you want to make sure that you have, you know, someone that has, you know, the empathy, compassion to really be able to work with the women even men, because, you know, it's just a very sensitive uh, mm -hmm. uh, issue that they're, they're having. So it, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge, you know, to, you know, get help, but, you know, you still keep pressing, you know, mm -hmm. and keep going. And then, you know, hopefully, you know, because right now, you know, I do have an administrator that takes care of all of the scheduling and, you know, helping out around the center, but, you know, I'm doing, you know, the consultations, the services and things like that. So, but in order to grow, I know I need someone to take over, you know, and start doing some of the things so that I'm not limited to only being able to do a few clients. So when there's more, when you have, you know, a team of people, you know, even if you're not here, business can still go on. And so um, that's definitely something that, you know, I'm working towards you know, really building a team, but it has been, you know, challenging, especially since COVID, you know, because people, you know, are worried about, you know, catching COVID, especially being in our industry, you know, we're so close. There's no social distancing, you know, because you're right there on top of the person doing the service or the style or whatever the case is. So um, it has been a little harder, but I'm hoping now that things are starting to um, change with the mandates and things like that, that, you know, it'll be a little easier to start getting some additional support for team, yeah, building a team. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, I've just put the, the question in the chat box to the rest of those who are attending today to see if you're experiencing any challenges. Um, um, you know, we're here, we, we brought uh, Daisha and Crystal they are sharing their heart with us. <laughs> and so definitely this is a great opportunity for you to, to take advantage of their sage wisdom and then anything perhaps that we can even help you if you're dealing with any um, difficulties. I know that uh, typically number one, when people are reached out to us here at the uh, MBAC is it's, they want money. Everybody's looking for grants. They're looking for um, relief and even uh, right now, there is a grant that is being offered through the county and uh, city, uh, Franklin County Recovery Grant, but there's such a demand for it 
that that they open up uh, in, in an hour, you know, they're full. <laughs> Uh, so they've got another round that is coming up in May. Uh, I believe it is May the 23rd. They'll be opening again. And, um, you know, and again, it's just first come, first serve. Uh, but even if you get the money, uh, the it, it's almost like it's still a patch because right. you got to have a strategy for how you're going to continue your business. If you're a solo entrepreneur, you're talking about um $5,000. If you have employees, you can get 10,000. And then there's a possibility if you are doing any additional hiring for another five. But if you've been in business for any length of time, you know that $5,000 <laughs> doesn't, doesn't go a long way. Okay. Um, let's see. So here's some of the, um, okay. Um, okay, Michelle, drive safely. As soon as you get in your office, we want to hear from you. Um, and uh, C. Solis, I, I don't know what your first name is, so, but I'm, I'm, I'm calling you out. I see you said your challenge is getting the proper guidance with lack of funds for hiring an accountant or an, okay, Carlissa, thank you. Um, so fund, funding to hire um, employees or services. Okay, I got you. Um, that is a challenge and often, uh, as I tell pretty much any business owner, I don't care what field that you are in, um, you first of all got to know what your um, cost of doing business is, okay? Um, with what you have, the resources that you have, or with the client base that you have, whatever products that you are offering, the bottom line is, is it are you able to generate enough revenue to sustain your business? That means to cover the cost of your supplies, to cover the cost of, you know, if there's, if you're an e-business and you're doing any kind of shipping expense, um, if you're able to cover the cost, if you're in a facility, most definitely can you cover that? And even if you're working from home, you've got expenses of operating at home. Um, you take all of these things into consideration. Is what you're doing sufficient for you to at least break even? And if not, what would it take? Okay, because um, grants are, you know, even loans are temporary because you got to pay them back. Okay, so a business plan or a business model is based on what the it would take for the business to be profitable, to cover all of its costs, plus have enough profit for the, and that includes paying yourself, because often we don't include that in our number. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, so, okay, I got enough, I can get my inventory, I can do this, you know, I can get my supplies, or maybe I can pay my booth rent and everything like that. But what about, what's your cost? Right you know, uh, uh, because your cost of living, you know, I have people often that end up having to go out and get another job so that they can work their business. You, you you're taking time away from your ability right. to make, right. Right, right, okay? Right. So anybody understand what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. So the point is knowing your numbers, okay? And we can help you, we can help you um, and determine what that break even is and how much profit that you need in order to, you know, cushion you for, you know, when COVID happens or something happens, you know, perhaps you don't make, make your numbers as you had anticipated. You got to have some kind of reserves so that you can continue to move forward. When you start looking at it this way, then you'll say, okay, doing this by myself or selling this particular product, knowing what is actually making the money because often we spend a lot of time with products that aren't really giving us the benefit that we really need. If I know I need to make um, $1,000 a week in order to cover all my expenses um, for the business, pay myself, all right? And if you got any, staff, whatever it is, if I know that I need to generate $1,000, what do I have to do in order to generate that? What product is going to, that I'm offering or what service am I offering that's going to generate at least $1,000, okay? And if you can't come up with that number, if, you, if it still is upside down, you're going to always be upside down, 
Okay. So you got to figure, you know, I mean, that's the reality check. That is the reality check. Um, how can I save money? How can I uh, maybe um, pivot as far as, you know, perhaps I was selling five different items or five different services. Okay. And only two of them are making me money. Well, instead of me wasting time on the three right. that aren't, you know what I'm saying? Let me focus on the ones that are right. so I can build my client base. Am I getting the word out to folks? How am I, you know, what's going on with marketing? I heard both of you talk about the fact that you're online, that you have websites, uh, you know, so all of these things I think would be beneficial for people to go through that exercise and understand really where you are. Um, I, I know people that have been, I mean, outstanding uh, service providers as far as hair and beauty, I mean, top of the line, but their businesses never really got them to the point where they were self-sufficient. They were always living from paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, you know, week to week. And so how do we get past that? You know, um, so, and we're here to help you. Uh, um, okay, to get a few things in the chat, I'll speak to, and then I know I've been talking, so I'm gonna let the people that I have. <laughs> I'm gonna let you uh, to, to chime in, please. That okay. just lets us know you're passionate about what you do also. <laughs> I, I, I am, I am, and you know, and I, it, like I said, this is our job. I mean, I love what I do. I mean, I've seen folks come through our program and be able to turn their businesses around. We've seen it work. So I'm not just talking, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just sharing with you what I'm seeing um, is working. All right, so Donna, Donna Jones, she says, I will operate a small business, but she works full time. Uh, she's a licensed uh, community health worker and a licensed braider. Okay, and she needs assistance in establishing a website. Okay, and, um, Oh, and she wants, she says she provides beginning braiding services for you. Um, Donna, are you teaching that or you're just providing the service for you? Just let me know what that is. Okay. All right. Uh, Taria, uh, Taria said she's at a break even point. And she'd like information on establishing a business plan. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So all of you all need to make that appointment with the MBAC. <laughs> that's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We've got some successful stories, um, you know, and perhaps even those that are on the uh, call, you know, if they have had, you know, seen any success um, with uh, trying to implement any of these things, we want to hear about that as well. So not just your challenges, but if you got any wins, or if there's anything that you've done that you found that has helped you make that, um, that pivot and then take your business to the next level. We want to hear about that, okay? Um, but I will put um, my contact information in the chat box so that you can reach out to us and just send us an email and I will send you a consultation um, email so that we can Make sure that we get you served. Okay, great. Okay, ladies. Um, so I think that um, you know we've talked about challenges. Um, tell me some wins, uh, Daisha. I, I know that you said that when you made the pivot, your bus your business, um, you, you enjoyed some success. So kind of tell us what that looks like for you. Yeah. So. Um we had a lot of organic marketing right after that um, due to just, you know, social media as well as um, third party sites. So one of the keys to being online is having other sites that validate you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so they're called backlinks. So as many sites that you can get to post links to your site that will refer people to you, will help increase your organic traffic. Fantastic. Um, and that's pretty much what happened after that. Um, we had already had success um, with being posted on blacknews.com, which went viral. 
and it still brings traffic to our store today. And that was three Man. years ago. Wow. Um, and so that is how ongoingly a, just one post can kind of bring in that traffic that you need um, to kind of sustain you. So you want to try to do that multiple times. So figure out who you could be networking with. Um, if there are PR companies that actually do this and kind of release your information to various sites so that it can be posted on different platforms. Um, and I can say that um, that has helped our organic marketing, people knowing who we are and networking with businesses as well as paid advertising. Mm -hmm. um, if we did not do paid advertising, we would not be making a lot of money. Now in today's age, you have to pay to play. Mm -hmm. have um, algorithms that change constantly on Instagram and Facebook and they kind of benefit those who pay the most. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> and so yeah. um, you have to kind of figure out what platform is better for you. And so for, for us, you know, we've, we hired, we've tried hiring a social media manager to kind of build our presence on Instagram and Facebook. And that wasn't really working for us. We still didn't see a lot of traction or a lot of people that were clicking on our site to purchase. Mm -hmm. And so our choice was to kind of um, move on somewhere else where we can get more money, more, we can get more for our money. And gotcha. so we decided to focus more on Google advertising, mm -hmm. um, do Google shopping ads, and um, the Google shopping ads have helped us kind of, um, you know, increase our income. Um, oh. And, and um, even during our slow months, we still have a nice amount of income coming in, which was more than we had when we first started in our brick mm -hmm. and mortar. So we okay. are making more money now than we were when we had our brick and mortar due to um, the ads. But I can say that with um, Google advertising, it is kind of um, intimidating. Um, mm -hmm. It has a lot of developer talk on there. And so mm -hmm. it can be hard to try to figure out yourself. I'm kind of geeky when it comes to stuff like this. <laughs> and I'm the type of person that will sit there for hours and try to figure something out until I get it. And I understand that not everybody is like me. And so mm -hmm. Although I did that in the beginning to get started, I, I knew once I got to a point like, hey, I can't, I can't do this anymore myself because it's something that I'm not doing that I could probably be doing better. Gotcha. And so at that point, I decided to hire an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. and, um, I started that, I say, at the end of last year. Um, so I'm just now starting with them. Um, and, you know, we're kind of in the testing stage to see what products work and what products should be highlighted the most. But the things that they bring to the table are expertise. They know how to um, not have, you know, traffic that you don't want coming to your site. So, for example, mm -hmm. people who don't buy, we don't want them on our site. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. we, have a high we don't want them on our site. And so they know how to put in like negative keywords to prevent these people from coming to your site. They okay. know how to get the products that do sell to show up in certain areas more. Okay. So Good. that more people are clicking. And so it's a benefit to it. Um, I guess for us, we've constantly been looking to improve over time. And so with that being said, we've changed our web website four times since we started. Within the okay. Past. <laughs> we have constantly been changing, constantly trying to figure out what's wrong, how do we fix it? And it's like your, your business plan is going to forever change. Mm -hmm. Don't get stuck in just doing one thing. The um, same constantly way. figure out how can you improve, what can be done better, take feedback from people, listen to your customers, um, because that's key to kind of like sustainability over time. Fantastic. Um, and, and I'm not saying that we're fully sustained. We're still trying to get there, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're constantly working on it. And right, right. I feel as though advertising right now is the biggest thing that every business owner needs to focus on. If you see how much big companies like Target, Walmart, 
all of these people are spending on advertising and just see how much you see them across your feed on Instagram. Like Amazon, every time I get on there, they have an ad yeah. for me, <laughs> you know? And so <laughs> that targeting is there and it works. So we have to figure out as the little men, like how do we fit into that? We need to take a percentage of that. Um, and that's what it's about. Just figuring out how you're different, how you can um, connect to your customer, figuring out who your ideal customer is and keeping your brand consistent across all platforms, having the same message so that you're attracting the, 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 the people that you want. Um, and so I think that's, <laughs> that's all. I think I answered the question. I kind of rambled a little bit, but <laughs> no, that, that was good. <laughs> that was good. Mm -hmm. That was good. Actually, as you were talking about that, um, you know, um, the e-commerce piece, um, we just had a webinar dealing with that. I don't know if you got a chance to, to check that out, uh, yeah. but it is available on demand on our, on our website, um, our YouTube site, I'm sorry. Um, and actually everybody that is on this call, you will be getting the link to this webinar um, and we will be sending it out to everybody who registered as well so that they, they can take advantage of um, this training. But we have a whole um, list of webinars that are available and we've had two particularly on e-commerce and dealing with SEO. And it was from one of our clients who has been in this, uh, you know, this area of business actually for over 20 years. So she kind of came up with it. And as it has grown and uh, hopefully um, that'd be information um, that can help you as you're trying to figure out how to, as Daisha said, tweak your website or your social media to get the most um, out of it. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do that actually don't cost according to the webinar person that I was listening to her and she was just fantastic. But the things that she was sharing, uh, you would probably have to pay a lot of money to get that from an advertising specialist. Uh, but if you have those funds, obviously, and you're able to engage someone by all means, but there are things that you can do. Um, Daisha, do you have a blog or Crystal? Do either of you have a blog? I do have a blog. Um, it's not completely up to date because we did, like I said, just transition to another website actually recently right. within the past month. So all of our blogs are not currently on there, but okay. we do have some blogs available. Okay. I know that um, one that was one of the things that uh, was mentioned um, at the webinar about um, even using those um, right. links to others um, mm -hmm. that can give uh, credibility to your, you know, and, and visibility to your um, website. Um, you know, they were saying having internal references, you know, to, you, to your website, as well as external res uh, references to those who are experts or, you know, add um, validity to your business and credibility to your business. So mm -hmm. to help drive traffic there. So, because uh, you want to be the authority on right. the area that you're talking about. You know, right. whatever your business is that you're offering, you wanna present yourself as being the professional. So when people search in Google, they're looking for the best fit to meet the question that, you know, people are searching for. Right. And if you have established yourself as an authority, you know, as far as they consider an authority, um, that's how you get your name populated in those lists and those search engines. So driving traffic there right. great right okay let's see um I'm trying to check the chat to see if there's any of some of you have reached out to me for um assistance with uh, your business so please make sure that you um respond to my email and we will get, set that consultation up for you um crystal um tell me some of your wins well, some of my wins, like I said earlier, I am the furthest from being a technology person, but really <laughs> just, you know, being able to offer, you know, those services to clients has really been, you know, beneficial for the business, myself, and for the client. So that's been a big win doing the 
the online uh, consultations and things like that. And so like Deja said, you know, I'm constantly uh, trying to grow the, you know, the advertising. So um, again, I had changed my website, I think four times and in the process now of having to revamp it just because things are constantly changing. So um, everything that Deja said, I'm in agreement with 100% because that's so, that's so important. But um, uh, the biggest win for um, Full Circle was during COVID, like I said, and having you know the foundation together. Um, my husband is a barber also. And so he was like, you know, what can we do, you know, to make sure if something was like this was to ever happen again, we could still service, you know, our clients. And so I didn't even realize that he had already been doing some research um, for a, a mobile salon. So he had been researching it for months, even before COVID even happened. And I didn't know it until after COVID and we were closed, he was like, man, because clients, they were calling, can you come to my house and do my hair? Can you come mm -hmm. and do, and I was like, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not coming to your house, because, you know, it was so many unknowns, because COVID had just started, right. and so, um, you know, he had been doing his research, like I said, I didn't know it, so, you know, once that happened, and, you know, thanks to, you know, my bookkeeper and my CFO, um, and being able to take advantage of some of the funds that were available, we were able to purchase a mobile salon. And okay. so um, we have that to be able to go and service, you know, clients, whether, you know, it's clients that want the consultation, the analysis, or if they need a, you know, a treatment done, or there's hair system service, whatever it is, um, we're able to do that in the van and so that's been helpful because a lot of people still even though you know it looks like we're at the coming to the end of it they're still uncomfortable with coming in you know to the center even though you know we have private rooms that we do our services in for the clients with hair loss they still you know are a little uncomfortable with mm -hmm. coming in and so mm -hmm. you know we're able to go to them and so that's really been a a big win for us to be Fantastic. able to, you know, cater to those. And it may just be someone that their schedule is really, you know, crazy and they just can't, you know, get over to the center. So to be able to go to them and to still be able to serve them. So that's been a really big win um, for Full Circle. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, that that is awesome. I mean, I love to see the, um, you know, not only the pivoting, but just the um, um, for, forward thinking, you know, about how we deal with, uh, you know, not only um, opportunities and challenges that come. I mean, you're probably doing things that you never thought you would be doing. With <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and being open to, to change and to, you know, to, to advance going forward. Um, I, I wanted to have... add to what you said really mm -hmm. quick. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention with our transition with COVID, we um, also did delivery services. Um, so we did curbside for a while, then we switched to online. And from online, we did delivery services. Um, and so um, we did not, so right now I'm currently operating out of my house, but probably for about a year, we had a storage unit. And mm -hmm. so that's where all of our stuff was held. And so that was kind of like our central location where we would pick up products for the day and deliver. Um, so that did help us a lot to just keep in touch um, with our Columbus community mm -hmm. um, and allow people to continue to support us, um, although we were closed. But what <laughs> kind of slowed that down eventually was that we were only one person that was doing right. It. So right. For me, I had a full I, I have a full-time job, mm -hmm. plus I'm running a full-time business, mm -hmm. plus delivering um orders to people. And it just it, it I had to choose myself. Gotcha. You know, and 
I, I just could, I mean, we tried to like incorporate a courier and things like that, like having someone deliver it for us, but that didn't work because we would physically have to go pick the the items, give them to them. So, yeah, they, for it. so it was still um, an interruption in our regular day. And so it doesn't hurt to just try things to mm-hmm. see how it works. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. never know, we might eventually bring delivery back at some point where we can probably maybe hire a driver or right. have our own car or, right. you know, it's just additional things that have to be planned out. But right. just doing it on a whim, that kind of helped us to, you know, move forward a little bit more. Um, but eventually it just couldn't be done anymore. Right, right, right. You know, and if there's no harm in, as you said, revisiting that right. business model and mm-hmm. business plan, I mean, what's working and what's not? You know, what's uh, uh, generating the revenue that we need to support itself? um, And what can I do that I can actually physically commit to? Because I think a lot of times we over we over prom we we over promise and under deliver in terms of you know not taking to consideration that you are um, you only there's 24 hours in a day. And you're one person. Right. You can only do so much. You've got right. to take the time for yourself as well. So, absolutely. Let's see. I, I'm just checking here on our chat. Uh, Sylvia uh, asked if there were if we had any contacts for manufacturers. She's looking to mass manufacture her product. Um, Sylvia, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about your product? that you're offering, you don't have to necessarily disclose all of your 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 uh, uh, proprietary secrets, <laughs> but just kind of give us an idea. And certainly we would like to, if we can uh, make some references for you or referrals for you, we will do that. All right, so we'll look at that. Are there any other questions for you? We are actually coming to the end of our um, hour. Michelle, thank you. Yes, self-care is critical, <laughs> period. <It is. laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> um, but, you know, we could actually, there are some other people that I wanted to invite on to this um, uh, webinar and um, that deal with personal care. We're probably going to have to do that <clears throat> on another time <clears throat> because I think that COVID in particular, the fact people were, were home um, you know, um, kind of rethinking about how you're going to take care of your own personal self. Right. A lot of opportunities for businesses have developed and we want to be able to give folks um, that are looking to start something in that area, give them the benefit of those who are doing it successfully. So they're out there. So, okay. And um, anyway, <clears throat> thank you all. Let's see, uh, her product is Buckeye Balm. Okay, and she does have a patent. And so it's, the company is Celebrate Your Lips. And uh, it's a lip balm, lipstick, lip stain using black raw products. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, we want to, you know, if you want to send that information over to me um, so that I can, um, maybe we can just schedule a consultation. And if anybody has any resources or any um, manufacturers that you deal with that you want to share, feel free to reach out to me and just let me know because I'm always trying to take advantage of any connections that we can make. You know, if people are finding something that's working for them it might help somebody else as well. So um, again, I appreciate everybody being on the call today and I uh, hope that you were able to take some uh, good information away. And again, as I said, this will be available on our YouTube channel. So you'll be getting uh, the link where you'll be able to access that um, probably later on today. And Desha, Crystal, this has been gold. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, so we are here and uh, yeah, I'm seeing thank yous in the chat and absolutely. Um, And and as I said, if you're in a situation that you need consultation, reach out to us. We are here to serve you. 
and pray that you all have a safe and blessed rest of the week. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You Thank are you welcome. Everybody. Absolutely. Take care now. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.